Hello everyone. If you guys don't know me by now, I'm Denzel from the Programs Department from Girl Scouts of Suffolk County. Um, today we're going to continue our ambassador uh, journey and this is the part two. We're going to do our water um, badge here. So we're going to go over our most important, significant natural resource. Can you guys guess what that is? If you guess water, you're right. It is water. Um, makes up almost more than half of the of the earth itself, more than half of you and I and our bodies. So it's pretty important that we understand um, the relationship between water. Um, let's just think about some things that we can, uh, you, we, we need water for. Uh, drinking, obviously, showering, maybe to flush the toilet, um, to clean things. So you definitely need water for like cooking, if you're making like pasta or something, um, washing your hands, brushing your teeth, some basic hygienal things. And watering your plants. Water, you can't forget the plants. You gotta water your plants. So that's definitely a couple things that we need to use for water. Drinking water as well. Um, and yeah, it's, it's pretty essential. So we got our homemade watercolor paint out of the freezer. Um, so it's ready to go. And you basically would just get this, get these out like any other ice cube you would if you were getting a drink or whatever have you. So we're just gonna twist it a couple times and then they should be ready to pop out. All right, so now is the time we're gonna show our creative sides and we're gonna make, make our own painting using our own water um, based paint. So I think this is the green, I'm gonna use the blue here. Since it's the water, I'm gonna make it like that. Now you can use this a couple different ways. So some, like I said before, you can let it sit a little bit and then maybe it'll come off a little bit more. Or sometimes if you want to use more of a direct style, you would use it more vertically. But me, I'm just trying to show you my best Van Gogh impression here. So we're gonna color this. This is gonna be our water here, since we're talking about water. Oh, look at that. Mind you, I am a amateur artiste. So don't judge me by my art. And art is always in the eyes of the beholder. So, that is the base our water is in. Get some, get some, you know, making sure like some rough waves here. Cool. Put that back in there. Um, I think this is our orange. So we need to make a nice, beautiful sun. In the corner. I feel like that's how every painting used to start or every little drawing used to start back in the day when you were a younger kid. You would start in the corner with the sun. Give it some, some sun lines, some ray lines. Look at that, looking beautiful so far, right? All right, so now let's make, um, uh, let's take this, right? And we're gonna make a little, a little island or so. No, this is, is this blue? Looks like blue, but it might be green. Maybe it's blue. Let's try this one. Looks like green. There we go, I'm gonna call that in. This is gonna be a nice little sea tree that you find in the middle of the ocean. Okay, boom, bada boom. And then we're gonna give it, it's a pineapple tree, all right? <laughs> we'll say that's what it is. 
It's a pineapple tree in the middle of the ocean. Maybe SpongeBob's there. Now, let's make some... These are some tropical birds here, so they're going to be red, okay? Maybe a little tropical bird. Bow. Oh, that, okay. That was a tropical bird. Let me just clean it up here. There you go. We got some red winged seagulls <laughs> flying over the Atlantic. But the, that's a that, those are those are that's a big bird. And then we're gonna do another one over here, just to show how beautiful it is. And this is just an, my first painting, just to show you a glimpse. So this is my my red winged seagulls <laughs> flying over the Atlantic, and going over to the pineapple tree. All right, so come back and we'll show you. Um, I'll take it more serious next time, and I'll show you my real art. We'll be right back.
just made our beautiful paintings with our homemade water paint. Um, we channeled our inner Van Goghs, our inner Picassos, but I want to get into something more serious here. Um, a lot of us in the United States have the luxury of having clean, filtered water, um, but some of us don't. You know, can you imagine ever going to your faucet and turning it on and the water is the same color as chocolate milk or maybe has a foul smell? I couldn't imagine taking a shower or washing my hands and stuff like that. You know, but people in the United States, uh, specifically Flint, Michigan, had to deal with this for about six years. Um, I got my research uh, basically from CNN. I already knew about it as well. But then I looked up um, the article just for the timeline. I looked up on nrdc.org. So I'm basing all my uh, current findings from that. Um, so basically it started in 2014 where... Um, Flint, Michigan was under the Detroit water line and apparently switched that to now um, they were getting their water from the Flint River. What people don't know about the Flint River is that uh, it was kind of like an unofficial dump site for all of Detroit and Flint um, to be dumped in chemical waste, uh, landfill, excess, pretty much anything they didn't want. They didn't know where to put it, so they put it in the river. And then now that river was going to the homes of all these people in Flint, Michigan. Um, some of the things that were happening was um, in adults, it was higher blood pressure was coming about from this. And with kids, it was um, stunting the growth of their brains. You know, so it, it, it didn't get enough media attention until it started affecting the children. And even then, um, a lot of people didn't really start talking about it. Um, a lot of people started losing... Uh, had had lo losing their hair, they were having skin irritations from this water. So it wasn't, it just wasn't good. It was foul colored. I mean, foul smelled and it, and, and it looked like chocolate milk, like I said before, which is not good, you know? Um, so basically what happened is with the, um, with everybody knowing about this, the only thing they could have done at the time was to issue out um, bottles of water for everyone who didn't have uh, filters in their homes. So that was a good attempt. Um, a lot of people started getting more water, um, but at the end of the day, it wasn't enough to put, to fix the problem. It's more like putting a bandaid on an open wound, you know? So um, later on laws, they were uh, the lead and copper rule basically got put into place. And basically the lead and copper rule said that um, a lot of these these pipes were lead piping. So they had to get removed and updated within 20 years. So that helped, um, you know, stop the, the contamination within the water, but it, it only did so much. And especially because uh, so residents who lived in Flint thought that the, the water companies and all these companies who had to remove these piping were, weren't doing it at a uh, faster pace that they wanted, you know, because this, this is water. We need water, right? So basically what happened was people started protesting and um, they wanted their water removed, the water, the, the, letter, the lead pipes removed faster. Um, um, so as of tw uh, September last year of 2019, the government uh, and state officials deemed that they would stop delivering the bottled water to some of the houses and homes of these people. And they decided that they weren't going to switch Flint back to the Detroit water supply line. So this is still an ongoing thing. Um, and as very much doesn't get the mainstream media, I think that uh, with everything going on with the coronavirus, you know, there's been um, a mass amount of money that has been uh, accumulated for medical supplies and stuff like that. And it's just like, well, some of this money could have been used to probably fix this water crisis that, you know, Flint, Michigan, uh, is still currently suffering from. Um, I think that a lot of people and especially some Flint residents would say that the reason why it doesn't get a lot of mainstream media, media is it because they believe it has some factors that trace back to systemic racism. And they think that it's just not on the priority list of the um, the, the nation's government. Um, so please let me know what do you think, uh, write down some of the solutions that you think may have helped, or let's say you were in, um, 
the Michigan area or uh, in public office there, what would you have done? Um, for me personally, I know, and let's think that money is not an issue here because we obviously have the money to do whatever we want with that. Um, so let's not think about that and let, let that hinder us from our decisions or hypothetical solutions. Um, so one thing I would have done, I would have probably uh, used some of the funding to get uh, Brita's or some kind of water filter for everyone that lived in there um, in the Flint area. I would then have to do remove and upgrade all these lead pipings because the only thing about the lead piping is that we don't know how far it would go because it can go in from Flint and it can spread to Detroit, maybe all of Michigan, and then who knows from there. So this is something we kind of have to nip in the bud and get rid of so we, we prevent it. Kind of like uh, Corona, you know, you stay home and hopefully that will, uh, you know, stop the spread of the, of the virus. But basically um, back to the Flint water crisis, um, I would have gotten somewhere to properly get rid of the waste that's in the city because this would if if this never had happened they wouldn't be dumping anything into the flint river thus the cause and effect um so i would find somewhere where we could get rid of the chemicals where the landfill can dump all their all their other excess waste so that way we can get, have a space allocated for all that waste um and then, like I said before, just making sure everybody has filters and, and making sure that everybody has clean, drinkable water, because at this point in time, they don't till this day, you know, and this started in 2014 and we're 2020 now. So six years of Flint, Michigan, not having clean water, drinkable water, you know, so that's another thing that we kind of take for example, uh, for for granted. And it's a luxury to have this um, because some people are worse than what we are, you know, so I would. Do more, a little more research, and I would come up with your potential plans that you may want to implement if you were the Mich uh, Michigan and Flint government, and how they, how would you help the people in, in Flint, Michigan? You can go and comment all of your future, your hypothetical plans at uh, at Girl Scouts underscore SC, and uh, we would love to hear about it. You know. So we made our ba our beautiful water paint art. We talked about something serious with the Flint, Michigan water crisis. Um, and we're just trying to educate and inform others who didn't know. So that's Tenzel signing off with another beautiful part of our journey. We'll see you again for part three.